So the, um, the main premise of this study was to investigate how this new PET imaging agent uh, called fluciclovine, which is an amino acid based imaging agent, could be useful in, uh, in informing the management of patients with biochemical recurrence of prostate cancer. And when we set about um, designing the study just under five years ago, there was no real standardized approach in terms of imaging uh, in, this, in this patient category. And what we, and what we tried to do was, in an, a minimally obtrusive way as possible, introduce this imaging test into a standard clinical care pathway uh, in, in a group of patients across the six centres um, to, to see how we could change management. Yeah. Um, so quite simply, we, uh, in order to investigate the impact or the, the clinical impact of, um, of using this scan in management of recurrent prostate cancer, we set a, a straightforward primary endpoint actually, uh, which was um, a, a, re a revision in management plan. So what we did was we recorded patients, um, the intended management plan of patients before they had a scan. We did the scan and then with the uh, with a clinical scan report to hand, the clinicians would then advise on a revised management plan. And where there was a change in that management plan, that would count towards the primary endpoint. And when we uh, set out this prospective study, we did inc include in the protocol a pre-planned interim analysis, which stated, uh, which would, be, would apply to the first 85 available subjects. And we stated there that if the per number of patients who had a change in management exceeded 45, then that we would stop the study for overwhelming effectiveness. And we performed the interim analysis last year, and we found that, in it, that management was changed in 52 out of the 85 subjects, allowing us to close the study early for overwhelming effectiveness. So uh, out of the 85 patients, we found that 52 out of the 85 had a change in management. We classed the, we classed the management changes into either major or other. Major man management changes were where there was a change in treatment modality, such as being changed from salvage therapy to systemic therapy, where the scan upstaged patients, or, or, and within the other treatment uh, plan change category as well, we, um, it was where there was change in treat, uh, within a treatment modality, modality. And as it turned out, all of these patients within this category had a change to planned radiotherapy fields. I think the implications are very exciting, really. Um, speaking uh, specifically from the UK point, for, from the UK point of view, um, we now, we, we've shown that in, uh, in this study, um, these patients, we had a median PSA level of 0 0.63. When we started out the study, we didn't really have an imaging test throughout of, with the potential to be rolled out throughout the UK um, to, to be used uniformly at such low PSA levels. Um, we've shown that almost two out of three patients who come in through the door for a scan leave with a potential change in their treatment. Um, and. And I think moving forward, we not, we've not got an opportunity, firstly in the clinical realm, um, to, uh, you know, to be able to, uh, to plan patients' treatment more accurately, uh, potentially offer more targeted therapy, things that we, we, we couldn't otherwise have with advanced imaging technology. Um, but in research as well, I think we, there's so much potential we've got, particularly with, particularly with targeted radiotherapy, salvage surgery, uh, that is now afforded by such imaging. And, and and having this imaging uh, can, afford, can allow us to do that. In terms of next steps for this study in particular, it is absolutely important now, now that we've said almost two out of three patients have had their management change, we need to figure out whether, uh, how, how that influences patient outcome because that's what matters at the end of the day. And that's what we'll be working towards.